Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to another Pick a Card reading. This one is focusing on your past life trauma. So this could be things that happened to you in past lives that are coming up now for you to deal with and clear and move on. Or maybe they're things that you did or just general themes and patterns that keep recurring. I have been noticing in myself and my friends and family and in readings and just everybody it seems to be dealing with past life issues that are coming up now and maybe it has something to do with all those retrogrades if you're watching this during retrograde season in 2020 but I feel like a lot of the things we're going through right now make a lot more sense when we put them into context with how we have gone through similar patterns in our past lives so it can be useful to try and figure that out even if you don't have any past life memories I think this is actually a really good time to open up to past life memories coming in if you are open to it and asking the universe for some of those memories to come up when the time is right for you, I really think they can be coming in for a lot of people right now for the first time. Recognizing and working through these patterns can help us put them to rest for the final time and then move on into bigger and better things. So go ahead and pick your card. Pile one, two, three, and number four. Hey, pile one, welcome to your reading. Your guys' first card up is Temperance. This is, I actually, when I first looked at this card, I thought it was the Justice card. As you can see, it is balancing the scales. With this, I really get the sense that you guys in your past lives were like too big, too much, too out of balance. That probably didn't go over very well in your community. Maybe you were some kind of preacher or something and always trying to convince everybody to believe exactly what you believe or maybe you were a pushy businessman always trying to like get everybody to buy what you were selling there was something that was out of balance you're putting yourself out there too much and that probably bit you in the ass um the first thing i thought of when i saw this that because I, I like these scales this is this temperance card looks so much like a justice card doesn't it balancing the scales i i really got like a crime and punishment vibe like you guys had been possibly wrongfully imprisoned or had your your society your culture inflict some kind of punishment upon you that probably wasn't really deserved i feel like even if you guys were really outspoken or really larger than life that you and you were punished for it you didn't deserve it you know the punishment was far greater than the crime um and that has probably left you guys with a a fear of putting yourself out there and a fear of people overreacting to what you do because you remember a time where you were speaking your truth, living as your most authentic self, and the whole world collapsed in on you. You were you were attacked and you were they tried to bring you down and they tried to stop you from from speaking, I think. And so the lesson you have been learning is to balance that out. How can you be your authentic self? How can you speak your truth? How can you do whatever it is that you want to do without creating these un undesirable reactions from others so for you the solution was probably to just tone yourself tone the way you express yourself down a little bit maybe be a little bit more pragmatic in how you deal with others you know obviously without watering yourself down without being inauthentic you probably went through a phase where you were inauthentic where you felt you had to hide you felt you had to wear a mask in order to be accepted but that that is overcompensating the the real way forward is to just be a little bit more pragmatic and a little bit more considerate of how not even considerate it's just a little bit more conscious of how your actions and behaviors and what you're doing how that uh, how other people react to you it is really i think that the key here is to be pragmatic not and not to be not to be scared and not to be doing things simply because people are expecting it of you it is it is learning the pragmatism and <laughs> the rest of your cards that is absolutely what you're doing the whole thing culminates in the six of swords so yeah you are moving on from this past paradigm right now 
Yeah, especially if you're watching this. Well, whenever you're watching it, because this message is for you whenever you're watching. But if you're watching this right now during retrograde season, yeah, these retrogrades are coming back. You might have to go through these patterns like one more time. Then you're going to be moving on. And this this turtle is, you know, sailing off into the rainbow. <laughs> and in the middle here, you have all of these fresh start cards. Ace of Wands, Ace of Swords, Innocence of Cups. So that that is a, a fresh start in all areas you know in fire in the wands energy a fresh start in your mental paradigms and a fresh start in love and the way you relate to others you are going to be able to isn't it beautiful to get the ace of wands next to the temperance card temperance can be always like the blacksmith dipping the hot iron into the uh into the water or into the oil to, to quench it and to temper it. That is, that is what is happening. You are like a flaming sword in the dark and you are learning to temper and learning that tempering, tempering yourself doesn't have to be making you less. It doesn't have to make you weaker. It can really be the thing that makes you stronger. That is what you are learning that you don't need to be so far out there. You don't need to be so boisterous. You don't need to be so over the top all the time. You don't need to constantly be trying to get people to do exactly what you want them to do or believe exactly what you believe. You can sit in your own sovereign strength and and, and that will ripple out um, more effectively than any type of projecting yourself out there. I'm rel reminded a lot of my grandpa, actually. He was such a strong but quiet character. He just sat in his chair uh, you know, minding his own business. He was really introverted, but he was an absolute sovereign authority. You know, <laughs> my grandma basically ran around and did whatever she wanted. Um, but I remember one day he was eating cereal and she was talking about buying another clock. And my grandma, she has no, like, no kidding. There was like 20 clocks in the kitchen and, you know, every 15 minutes, all the clocks would be ringing and it was, it was insane, right? My grandma's a bit of a shopaholic. And so he was eating his cereal. I think it was his porridge actually. <laughs> and he just said, no more clocks, never stopped eating his porridge. And <laughs> that must have been like, I was, I was a teenager. I must've been 14. So that, that has been like, you know, now I'm 31 and he's been gone since I was 16. So, and my grandma has still not bought, an, bought another clock. He just said that once and that was it. He didn't have to pick a fight with her. He didn't have to explain to her how it's insane to have so many clocks and blah, 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 blah. No, he just said, no more clocks. And that hit home so hard because she, my grandma knew if grandpa was saying no more clocks, that that was serious. <laughs> and, and she respected that. And she has never bought another clock ever since. It's that, that kind of thing. You know, you, you guys don't need to be over the top. You don't need to be getting into a fight about something. You don't need to be arguing a lot or really pr pressing your case. Now you're moving into a paradigm where you can just sit in your presence, sit in your authority, and people will respect you and listen to you and learn from you just from your more balanced, tempered state. Yeah, because you got wands, swords, and cups. Fresh start through all of that energy. And this is, at the end of it, totally moving on. <laughs> moving, moving on like your turtle. Okay, I'm just going to pull one of these oracle cards. the fates this card is just what i was saying it's this card is all about knowing what you can change and knowing what you can't change knowing when you need to be stubborn and when you need to be dedicated and determined and knowing when that's just all futile i need to just let it slide it is exactly it is being tempered it is knowing basically what is worth your effort and what isn't what is faded and what isn't there are things that are almost set in stone. I won't really say that anything is ever entirely set in stone, but some things are just really, really probable and really for your best benefit. So you should just go with them regardless of how you feel about it. But then of course, there are times where you really do need to put your nose to the grindstone and be determined. And no matter how many times something is, a uh, going wrong, you need to work through those obstacles. And it can be really hard to tell, right? You really need to use your discernment to know, okay, is this a, is this a moment where I need to go with the flow and accept that these obstacles are, um, 
trying to guide me back onto my actual course or are these obstacles coming from like denser energies or lower light templates and I need to actually work through them and these challenges I need to work through or are these obstacles guiding me back onto a different course it's it's hard to tell sometimes that's what you guys are learning to figure out you're knowing how to pick your battles essentially you're knowing what is faded and what isn't perfect <laughs> I, I think that basically sums up your message I, I think just the other thing to reiterate from earlier is that as you clear through this past life issue, this one isn't really a trauma, this is more, more like an issue, although this really could have been traumatic if you guys really were imprisoned or something um, or were stoned, somebody, somebody was stoned because of this. Um, if, <laughs> if you, you might have to go through these energies one last time. That might be what's happening to you right now. So if you feel like you've been really triggered recently, like maybe you have this issue about people uh, never believing what you say, right? Um, or people suddenly, everyone thinks you were lying about something. Everyone thinks you're a liar, even though you're to totally telling the truth. If you're experiencing that one more time, you'd be, uh, be like, oh my God, why is this happening? Why is this happening again? How can this possibly be happening again? I think this is the last time. If you navigate this energy with through with your authenticity with your discernment with your integrity and knowing that this is the last time you need to do it so that you can release it just go through it with as much nobility as you can keep looking forward and focus on digesting you know and purging and releasing this energy you release it because you are releasing it this is the six of swords this is you're moving on from this this is the last time you're going to be putting this in your past so just yeah, this is it. This is the last time. Look to a brighter future where you're going to be in your greener fields. I mean, in this card, this is this six of swords. It's not even greener pastures. It's a uh, rainbow pastures. Can you see that this uh this turtle he's going into the rainbow. So, you guys are going to better places. So, just hang in there as you do these energies one last time. And I think that's it for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 2, welcome to your reading. You guys in your past lives were some kind of pioneer. The word might be some kind of explorer. You had some, like, lack of stability in wherever you grew up, wherever your home was, and you left. This could have been somebody, you know, coming from Europe to settle in Canada, for example, like my ancestors. Um, but of course, there's been all kinds of migrations all through human history. For some of you, this is even pertaining to your lives on other planets. I know a lot of my viewers are starseeds, so you guys know what I'm talking about. If you came from another planet, uh, this is this is about that. But th not everybody is going to be a starseed watching this. So we'll just keep it general. This is just take a look at this. You got two of pentacles, two of pentacles and the star. This two of pentacles, there is so much balancing going on. This crow, it, this infinity symbol with these pentacles are going around and around and around. Really lack of stability. Like he doesn't have anywhere firm to stand on. And he's trying to balance it. And then the star. So this is what I said. You know, somebody coming from the stars, coming from another planet. But also just for everybody else. Just coming from somewhere else. Falling after the tower moment. After a great upheaval. Falling down to a new land to a new place where you have a fresh start full of healing. And it was funny, just before I turned on the camera for your reading, uh, I was just standing around and I randomly shuffled this deck and flipped it over and looked at the bottom and it's fork in the road. I didn't even intend to, to pull this card or shuffle it or look at the bottom or anything. I did it entirely subconsciously without noticing. That really is a sign to me that this... Um, this card meant to come out because it exactly it, it is exactly what I was thinking about. Those two of pentacles and the star. You had you had a fork in the road. Exactly this. Exactly this. Still looking at the signpost, going, which way are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? You gotta go somewhere new, and you're 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 you were on your journey. So I think there's a couple issues that could be still with you because of all of this. First, it's that feeling of maybe you you really feel like wherever you are is not home or that it's a place you're just visiting or a place you're still getting used to. You feel like you belong somewhere else. But at the same time, you 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 know that home is not a stable thing. This this get this crow dancing on this lack of stability, dancing on those two of pentacles is really kind of deep in your soul. Your your soul remembers 
the ground is shifting beneath your feet. Maybe where you lived, there was a famine or maybe there was a war or maybe you were cast out. Maybe you were chased off. Something happened and there was just there was no safety, no stability where you were. And you really wanted you had dreams of a better life. That's why, you know, some of you were, were pioneers coming you know, to the new world and in whatever new world that was. You, you had to go and start anew and you just had so much hope, so much dreams of coming there for healing and starting a new life. And you have been. Seven of Pentacles, you have been gathering up all of your resources and working hard. Seven of Pentacles is such a, like, a, a farming like a farming thing. Somebody growing their garden, somebody working towards the future, but it's also not like, not like the Eight of Pentacles. It is a, a waiting energy, a meditative energy, like Imagine you planted some seeds and you're waiting for them to grow. So you've been probably feeling pretty... <sighs> the Seven of Pentacles can be frustrating unless you're really settled into it, unless you're really settled. And you might, maybe you've had lifetimes where not really much happened. You just like lived on a farm in the middle of nowhere and you worked the land and you, you, you grew up and died on the farm you were born on, right? You just, just kind of stagnancy, kind of um, in a in a waiting period, in a, in a hibernation state while you waited for some of these issues to settle. Sometimes those lives, some people call them buffer lives. It's like where nothing really happens. You don't have any major conflicts, but you just kind of go through life with enough of whatever you need. But it's also, it can be a little bit dull. <laughs> those lives happen because we need a moment to process all of the karma and we need a moment just to catch our breath and to heal. So that's what you guys have been going through. But moving forward, this is now you're finding your inner strength. And look, we have the infinity symbol again, too. So now you are getting a grip on all of this lack of stability. Now you're realizing that you don't need to find stability in the external world. You don't need to find it in your home. You don't need to find it in your land. You know, you are your home. Your, your body is your home. Your soul is your home. You don't need to find it anywhere else. You have the inner strength to gather everything to you and to be sovereign in your own self and this is really a new idea for you because you have page of swords so and look this page of swords is taking off he's a crow he's launching he's launching you guys are about to launch because finally you know you came from another place and maybe you've lived this same paradigm out in this life if you guys have ever had to completely start over if you moved to a new country or just to a new city maybe changing schools in when you were a kid um, having to make any massive shifts in your job or your family life, just anything where that energy can be playing out in this life. Maybe it's happening right now. Maybe you guys are sitting in this, this page, the seven of pentacles energy right now. And you feel like you're just waiting and waiting and waiting, waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Well, hang in there because your, uh, your takeoff, your launch is coming. It's absolutely coming. And you have this fork in your road this fork in the road. I feel this theme has been play, playing out in your past lives and in this life, because, of course, we play out our karmic cycles from our past lives. We play them out now. You guys are playing this out now. So, yeah, get, just know that right now this is your chance to get all of your pentacles in a row. Get everything sorted out, uh, both materially, if you're about to make some kind of major shift. Um, you know, this is your chance to get your resources together. But also internally, this is your chance to go through all of your processing, you know, look back into this life or into your past lives and figure out, um, really, what, are you still traumatized by everything you left behind? Are you traumatized by not having a home? Are you traumatized by this lack of instability? Are you traumatized about whatever drove you from your home? Are you traumatized by getting to the new world and finding out that it wasn't as great as you hoped or that it was way more work than you'd hoped? Are you tired of seeing forks in the road? Whatever those issues are for you, this is your chance to resolve them. That's why you're sitting in this meditative seven of pentacles energy. This is your chance to look within and deal through all of that sort through all of it because then when you, you that is how you come into your inner strength and then when you launch you can leave all of that behind all of that behind this this crow is not taking the whole nest with him he's not taking all of his seven pentacles he's just taking this one idea this one sword he's taking that in launching because that's all he really needs this has also been part of this has been learning what do you really need what do you really need do you do you need to bring the whole house in the kitchen sink with you or do you just need your own wits about you? Do you just need your own strength and your own skills? Yeah. Okay, I think a couple of these Black Moon Oracle cards. Uh, 
They're so big, they're hard to shuffle. Here we go. Venus, love. If you're watching this in retrograde season 2020, Venus is retrograding through Gemini for quite a while. You might want to check out what house or what part of your chart she is transiting. That big clues for me, Venus is transiting my eighth house. And all kinds of past life eighth house issues are coming up for me. So definitely a clue. Um, also, maybe the things that are just the fact that Venus came out, Venus in love. What is... Have you had to make sacrifices for people that you love? Did you have to give up your whole life, your career, your home, your country for love? Maybe you did. Maybe that is something you need to reconcile. I know I've, I've done that. I've done that, guys. Um, when I got married, I had to move to a new country and I had to leave behind, you know, my my friends, my family, my career, um, a major tri like trip I was going to be taking, all of my hopes and dreams. I had to go just, oh, OK, never mind. I'm doing something else instead. I'm going to go get married and go go be a married person. And I was really traumatized. By, like That was tough, right? It was tough to really have to decide that, you know, being with my partner was going to be more important to me than than all these other things. And I don't regret it for a second. It has absolutely been the right decision and I would do it again in a heartbeat. But for a few years there, it was tough because I, I would hear about all the things I was missing out at home and I would think, oh, I could be on a beach in Thailand. Instead, I'm here, you know, being married. <laughs> and, and it took me a while to really clear through that. And what has really helped has been realizing how that how that was actually playing out patterns from my past lives. Like, Absolutely. It was just another another loop in this karmic cycle. So you guys could have something similar to that going on. Part of fortune increase. Awesome. There you guys go. All of this is about to be cleared out. You are entering the lucky time, like part of fortune. That That's it. This is benefits are coming your way. Things are going to work out uh, smoothly and easily for you. It's just it's good luck. This is this is good luck. I take this as just look at this beautiful sign that came in just to give you a little bit of reassurance that everything is going to work out for you, be smooth and easy for you. It's not going to have to be so hard anymore. You're going to be taking off. You're going to be taking off. Look at this strength. So you have all this stuff over here. Sure. But over here, you've got strength, part of fortune, increase and the page of swords who is lifting off. So you guys are going to bigger and better places. And this fork in the road is, I hope, the last time you guys have to face this fork. If you navigate this correctly, you will, You, I mean, there might be other forks in the road, right? Our problems never go away. They just change. But you can stop going through this cycle if you do this with ease and grace and flow. If you do it from your integrity, do it from your authenticity. Flow through this. I mean, you got Venus and part of fortune. So there is loving support and blessings coming in for you. And I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Paw3, welcome to your reading. This really kind of creeped me out because I had a reading, like a pick a card reading. I don't know if I remember if it was last week or two weeks ago, but most of these same cards come out. I know the King of Eels or the Knight of Eels. <laughs> The Knight of Vessels, who is an eel, was over here. And I know we also had the Six of Stones, Exploitation. And I'm pretty sure the Hooded Man and the Ace of Arrows was also there. So if you guys synced up with that reading and then through a series of random events also synced up with this reading and you're getting all the same cards again, you guys need to like stop asking about this problem um, I know when I get major repeater cards, it is a sign that I am just paying, putting way too much energy into something. I'm worrying about something a lot and I need to put it to bed. I need to let it go. You'll just keep getting the same repeating messages. The universe isn't going to give you more insight. It has given you exactly the level of insight that you needed and that's it. <laughs> so, I mean, you're free to keep getting repeater cards if you want. But yeah, that's just for the people who've also had that reading. Um, for everybody else, well, I mean, for everybody, really, what is the major message here? Your past life issue. This 
Knight of Vessels, this eel card, really perplexes me because I don't picture the Knight of Cups as an eel at all. I don't like eels. They creep me out. Um, so in this in this spread where we're looking at your past life issues, I feel like you were the Knight of Cups. You were somebody who was full of love and you wanted to bring love to others, but other people didn't appreciate you at all they kind of saw you as an eel and you were like well i'm just who i am what what's wrong with being an eel okay it, it doesn't don't i have a right to be exactly myself and can't i be loved for myself um and people just weren't on board with that there was something about you that creeped them out and that doesn't mean that it should have creeped them out that means that that's their problem right you don't need to like if you're an eel then be an eel an eel <laughs> should like look at my bias right i looked at this and go ew the king of the knight of cups can't be an eel gross eels are gross well that's that's my bias and judgmental nature and my issues with eels that doesn't mean that eels have any are any less beautiful or any have any less right to exist than any other animal right <laughs> um yeah so i think people just didn't see didn't see the real you or didn't appreciate you for who they are uh, who you are and they just got a creepy vibe off you not necessarily through any fault of yours that's just it was just unfortunate how you weren't meshing with the people around you um in a way that was good for everybody and this really drove you to be really um solitary the hooded man i can almost see some of it somebody getting like driven out of a village and having to go live in a cave in the forest all by themselves and yeah, so you have like a an alienation complex. Like you feel ostracized and alienated to the extreme. Like to the extreme. I know how that feels, guys. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I know how that feels. Just feeling like, you know how you see on social media and stuff, somebody will be like, wow, you know, I never thought I could find my tribe. I thought I would be alone for my whole life. But then I did this thing and here I am. I found my people. I found my tribe. Like, you know, yay tribe. And, you know, you're sitting there going, well, isn't that nice for them? They thought they were alienated, but then they found their tribe. How nice. There is no tribe for me. That's how you feel. There is no tribe for me. It's not a matter of finding them. It's not a matter of just finding my people or finding the right subculture. It's like, no, there is nobody for me. There is no tribe for me. You feel that deep, deep down into your bones. <sighs> I, I've said that exact thing. I, I know how this feels because I have said that exact thing. I've sat there looking at social media and going, hey, look at all these people finding their tribes. Isn't that nice for them? There is no tribe for me. That's what I thought until about a couple of months ago when I started making these videos and I started finding that there is a tribe out there for me. Like, some people who watch these videos really resonate with me really deeply. And I, that's because they're my soul family. My tribe is my soul family. And I started this little project up because I wanted to connect with my soul family. So guys, your tribe is out there, but they're your soul family. They're your soul group. And when we incarnate on earth, our soul group gets spread out all across the earth. We, we don't typically group up. You know, there might be one person, um, maybe two people if you're lucky, that um, you know, you grow up with or meet early in life who are part of your soul family. But, you know, for the most part, you're spread out because we're all out there, you know, working on different projects, doing different things, being different branches of the tree. So really, your your soul family is out there. And just remember that you won't find your tribe in any kind of social construct. You'll find it in your soul because your your tribe is your soul family. And this whole alienation ostracization trauma thing that you had to go through you chose to go on that journey because of the incredible lessons you would learn by looking deep within yourself you had to learn that um you don't need to be part of a collective to find value in yourself you don't need to be contributing to others to, to be valuable you don't need to help anybody else's help this was like the school the school of hard knocks to learn that you can thrive entirely on your own you don't need nobody and of course that is a really difficult lesson to learn and then if, once you learn that lesson you have to do a little bit of unlearning it because then you need to remember you need to learn how to integrate yourself back into your collective ace of arrows the breath of life this is about seeing things clearly seeing things as they are 
Nine of Arrows, dedication. You guys are still on, on your path. I think you are still in this hooded man, hermit vibe. You are still learning to perceive. You are still learning the lessons of being the alien, of being the outsider, of being the outcast. But you are also starting to learn the value of that. You guys are getting your clear sight and you are learning to be dedicated to yourself, learning to be dedicated to your path, learning to be dedicated to your, your vision. And uh, unfortunately, you still feel exploited. Six of stones, um, this card here. Interesting interpretation of the six of pentacles exploitation. You are feeling that you put in all of the work, that you put in all of the energy and that nobody is reciprocating and you're feeling exploited and you're seeing exploitation everywhere you look around you. You guys, I think, are still in a little bit of a bleak place. Um, that's only because you're still going through this, this cycle of learning to be entirely independent, learning to be entirely self-sufficient. And I think in order to speed up navigating through this pocket of energy, you need to go way deep down inside. If every time you find yourself looking for explanations on the outside, every time you find yourself looking for validation, comfort, support, strength, looking outside that's what you need to stop doing. You need to look entirely within. And I think most of you, you know, you might find 95% of what you need within yourselves or something, right? Just as an example, but there's still something. There's like one, I think there's one thing left. It's like you guys have one lesson left to learn on, on this subject here. And it's probably like beating you in the face. What in your life do you keep looking out for Keep looking to find outside yourselves. Is it money? Maybe you have trouble, you know, making enough money because whatever field you went to college for doesn't have any jobs. And, you know, so you still live at home or you live with your partner and, you know, they make enough money. So it's okay that you, you know, haven't quite gotten your career together yet. Right. Or maybe you are always look for validation outside yourself. Or maybe you're looking for um, organization. Like sometimes people just, they can't get their shit together. So, you know, they rely on one other person to keep them organized, you know, to set their alarm in the morning to, you know, make sure the dishes are clean, stuff like that. There's like one thing that's left and you guys probably know what it is. So look deep, deep, deep down, figure out what your one last problem is in terms of looking for validation on the outside or looking for support or sustenance on the outside. And like, handle that, like shoot your arrow right at it, look at it clearly, shine your light on it, and then resolve it. I figure out how you can do that thing from within, how you can receive that support from inside yourself, how you can support yourself on that, how you can validate yourself on that. Maybe it's as simple as going to a movie by yourself. Maybe you never want to go to a movie by yourself so that you so you're always trying to get people to go with you, but they never want to see the movies you want to see. So you just kind of go in eh, and then it just creates a whole thing. Well, you just go see the movie by yourself. You can have an awesome day. Take yourself out for a dinner date. Take yourself out to the movie and just have a good time by yourself. It doesn't mean that's that's totally that's totally great. I do shit like that all the time, but I had to learn to do that. I, for me, it was going hiking. I always thought I had to take people with me to go hiking. And then I, then they'd ruin my hike because they always wanted to talk. Or they didn't want to go as far. They didn't want to go as high and they'd ruin it. Well, I'd take myself hiking. And then that, I, those are the best days for me. Those are the absolute fucking best days when I go on a hike by myself. So yeah, learn whatever that one thing is. I think you guys are, you're so close. You're, you're almost there because the nine of arrows dedication. You're so close. You've basically done it. Just solve and resolve that one last thing. And then I feel like you'll be able to put all this shit to rest and open up a whole new leaf. Let's pull some, a little bit of guidance here for what you can do moving forward. And not for you. <laughs> yeah, so you need to recognize what you need to get over, what you need to leave behind, and what just isn't working. If you keep looking outside of yourself, or in, the, in this case, it's that. If you keep trying to get people to go to the movies with you, realize that that's just not going to happen. That's not for you. Here and now, yep, focus on yourself, focus on your present, focus on 
what you need to do now. Don't worry about how alienated you were in the past. Don't worry about not having enough of something in the future. Focus on exactly what you have right now. I also take this card as an invitation to meditate. This card can absolutely, um, yeah, because that is how you focus on the here and now. That is how you get present in your like current awareness. And that is how you learn to let go of the things that are not for you. So if you've been looking for another sign from the universe telling you to meditate, there you go. And unfinished symphony. Yep, that is what I was saying is you guys are so close. You've been working, you've, you've gone through so much personal growth, so much inner work, so much cultivating your inner strength, but you're just not quite done yet. Not quite done. There's one more thing. It's like you need to write the last movement of your symphony. That That's it, guys. And yeah, so it looks like I'm not supposed to see past the end of your journey. I, I tried to forecast what was coming next, but we just got kind of more confirmation about what to do right now. So this is, I think, really like a, the last hurdle, the last stumbling block for you guys. Once you can learn this lesson 100% and get through this last barrier, then, you know, it'll be different for everybody. Then all the world will open up for you and you will have new cycles to embark on, new doors to go through. So get this last bit of this karmic cycle resolved and then there you go. You'd have to, uh, you know, find other readings to see what comes next for you. But in the meantime, just what is the last thing you need to learn about being self-sufficient? And how can you put these feelings of alienation to bed? You don't need to lick your wounds and be a victim about that forever. You can get okay with that. Trust me. If I can do it, anybody can do it. You can, you can get okay with, with this whole alienation experience. And you do that by getting present in the here and now. Getting present in the here and now. So good luck, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 4. Welcome to your reading. I think you guys were a little bit irresponsible in your past lives. You have the Chariot and the Eight of Wands and the Ace of Cups. That is a lot of passion, a lot of quick moving. I mean, just look at this person flying through the air on their chariot, just like, ah, my life is a party and everything is great and charging ahead. The Eight of Wands is so much speed, fast, fast, fast. Like you guys lived fast and hard, uh, maybe never thinking about the consequences. And I feel like you're really diving towards something that you loved. You would see something that you wanted and just go for it. Ace of Cups, you would just, you would take your dream, put it on the horizon and just charge ahead just without thinking about the consequences and without thinking about who you might be hurting along the way, especially yourself. And a lot of you may have died young because of this. You know, you might have charged right off a cliff. You might have, you know, gotten on a ship to go be a pirate in the Caribbean and, you know, gotten yourself killed. You could have gotten yourself imprisoned if you were going after something, um, you know, illegal. You could have, I just thought of cowboys. Uh, did any of you have lives in the Wild West? Um, you know, where everything was just, you know, it was the Wild West. Uh, they don't, no other explanation needed, right? That that kind of stuff. You guys just, yeah, so much passion, so much speed, uh, so much emotional reactivity. and But just, you know, it wasn't like this was really bad, but the consequences were bad because you were kind of unhinged, you know? You really were coming from a good place. You just had so much passion, so much desire, so many dreams to get what you wanted. And and it's not like you wanted to get them at the expense of other people. Not necessarily. Maybe some of you had, um, you know, we've all had lives where we, where we had like shadow lives, right? So for some of you, certainly, maybe you did do things at, at the expense of other people. I mean, and that's fine. We've all done that. We've all done that. We can get, <laughs> that, that. that's a topic for another day. But, you know, so regardless of who you hurt along the way, I think most of you were mostly just hurting yourselves you just, yeah, as you can see, I'm talking really quickly and I'm kind of repeating myself and I'm just charging ahead. That's what you guys were doing. And <laughs> now the reckoning has come. The King of Swords is upside down and then you have the Ten of Wands. So I think this is all finally caught, caught up on you, caught up to you. 
you are having in this life. Um, maybe you've been like this in this life too. That's often how this goes, right? We have these past life cycles and then they come up in this life. And then, bam, Saturn comes back around, right? Um, you need to get responsible. You you probably learned that you are learning to slow down, to get responsible. Because if you don't, bad things happen to you. You've been through this in this life as well. The King of Swords in reverse speaks to me of somebody who is really having to rein themselves in and not liking it. Like maybe you had a child rather young and now you have to step up and be the parent and you don't, you didn't want that, right? This, this is tragic to you. And I get it. If I had had a child young, I would, if I had a child now, I would be traumatized about having to step into that kind of responsibility. Maybe you have to step up and get a really well-paying job, even though it's a job you don't want. And, and maybe you hate, you know, going to work every day because who doesn't? And, you know, but you need to do that either to support your family or in support of a goal for your own self. And maybe you're just trying to be more disciplined with, you know, your health and your lifestyle and you, you don't like it. You're really having to do things in the realm of discipline, especially mental discipline and responsibility and rationality. Maybe you guys, yeah, before you really let your intuition run away with you, um, and now you're really having to get in touch with data, with the facts, with your logical mind. You're having to be more left-brained and you're you're not liking it. Um, and the Ten of Wands is, yeah, more of the same. These the King of Wands, the King of Swords and the Ten of Wands and right right together. It's the same story. Your your burden, you're feeling burdened, you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling exhausted, you're feeling like this it maybe isn't all worth it. But the thing with the Ten of Wands is that is it is always the harvest is coming in. It really is going to be worth it. Just imagine how good this, you know, if this person is a farmer, imagine how good they're going to feel when they put down their, their burden, when they put down their hay bales, when they put down the bushel of apples. Once the harvest is in and you put it down and you get to sleep and then, and then it's the harvest moon, right? It's party time for farmers. It, you're, you're, you guys are like so close. I think, I feel like your harvest is, some of you is probably coming in right now. Some of you, it's coming in really soon. And then you're going to be able to put it down and then you're going to be able to enjoy. So with having all of this passion and speed and recklessness in the past and all of this responsibility and yeah, responsibility, I think is really the word now. Um, the next step is going to be having to balance this out. That's not easy, right? Um, once we, when we have to, it's like you've gone from the pendulum has swung from one extreme all the way to another extreme. And soon it's going to, it's going to kind of come back to the center point where you're going to be able to look back and remember, wow, remember how passionate and full of life and desire and drive I was, whatever happened, whatever happened to me, like, where's the old me? Oh, how did I become this like suburban parent or this corporate worker bee? How did I, how did this happen to myself? I mean, you know how it happened, but now you're really starting to feel, wow, can I get a little bit of myself back? The answer is absolutely yes. You can bring both of these aspects of yourself together. And that is really going to be the trick. Uh, you know, this ace of cups right in the middle kind of speaks to that melding everything together in a cup bringing it all together, swirling it around, like imagine someone swirling a glass of wine, right? Bringing it all together. That is how you will be able to move on into the next phase of your life. Now that you've learned both extremes, you're going to realize that you don't need to go to either extreme. You can be more balanced and centered and have all of yourself in one cup. You'd, maybe you've even been living kind of a double life, you know, like parent or worker, like employee of the month on during the, you know, the week. And then Saturday night you go out and just you're a wild child, <laughs> right? You're going to be able to bring this all together. Imagine pouring like the temperance card. I wouldn't, it needs to be here. The temp temperance card, imagine pouring, you know, the waters in two cups into one cup. They'd be going into this cup right in the middle. So yeah, you guys are just also, um, the other thing to remember is all of this passion and speed and dedication from back here has helped you in whatever you have been, whatever responsibility you've had to work through that has helped you. It has helped you see the light at the end of the tunnel and it's giving you the energy you needed to persevere through this. 
Um, but I feel like maybe you feel like your light is almost extinguished. Maybe your spark feels almost out. Maybe it feels like it did go out, but it's going to come back. It's going to come back, guys. This is just, this is all part of your karmic cycles. This is all part of your learning process. This is all part of the simulation you programmed for yourself. And once you come back to a, the centered, the centered space, coming back to this ace of cups, you're going to have the benefits of having gone to the both extremes, but you're not going to have to be in either extreme anymore. Serendipity. Yeah, things are going to be working out for you. You're going to be finding now that you have balanced yourself out and gone to those extremes, you're going to be moving into a new area of flow, a new paradigm of flow where it you'll find yourself realizing that you don't need to try so hard anymore, right? You, maybe before in order to get something done, you had to you know, plan in advance and make all these schedules and save up all your money and then try to get everybody all organized and yada, yada, yada. And in order, but now it'll just like happen. You'll be like, wow, I didn't even need to try. I didn't even need to do anything. And the unit of first just brought that together for me. Amazing. <laughs> that is going to be your reward. Moving into a paradigm of serendipity. Not for you. Yeah, this card came up for somebody else. This is all recognizing what, um, what you don't need and what you need to give up on some things even if you really 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 want them they're not actually in your highest best interest some things it's just your ego these this is getting in touch with realizing what is an ego attachment and what is really coming down from your higher self a lot of these things you were charging towards in the past weren't actually for you and that is how why you always would crash and burn. So now as you move into serendipity, you can get in tune with what is really in tune with your higher self. What is in tune with the cosmic flow? You can still accomplish your egoic desires, but they need to be aligned with your destiny, aligned with your higher self's plan for you. And that way, so, you know, you might think, okay, I really need to be with that person or I really need that one specific job or I really need to go to that one specific island in the South Pacific. Well, nah, maybe not. Okay. You can definitely hold on to the essence of those intentions, to the essence of those dreams. You know, you want to be with your ideal partner. You want the job, the career that is most optimal for you. You want to go on this exotic vacation, but be open to the details changing, right? Hold on to the intention of what you want. Because like the real essence, the energetic essence of what you want, but let go of the details. You know, from our human egoic perspectives, we're not good at realizing what details because our, our perception is limited. Our higher self, let them fill in the details because, you know, they will find you the actual, your actual twin flame partner, right? They will find you the actual job that is just so in line with your soul, so satisfying for you that will be, you know, financially abundant and emotionally fulfilling for you. And they will send you on that vacation that is really where you're meant to be. It might not be the island that you have pictured. Maybe it's even a different climate, but you'll find that maybe that is where you meet the love of your life. Or maybe there's some kind of a, there could even be a deeper purpose to sending you to that specific spot. Like you could be going there to do energy work and you're not even knowing it. That happened to me. <laughs> you know, you can be going there to receive activations from the earth and not even know it. That happened to me. So just try to trust the serendipity and know what is not for you. If something is just not working out, stop banging your head against the wall and know that um, just if a door is closing, let it close. A better door is going to open for you. Fork in the road. This card also came up for somebody else. Yeah. You... This is really echoing what I was just saying about doors closing and yeah, not for you. There's going to be a fork in the road. And really, I think in your guys' situations, you are being asked to trust the flow, trust the serendipity. Don't think too hard about which path to go down. Trust your intuition on this one. Trust your gut. Um, but for you guys, it's make sure you're really in the center of your pendulum shift don't make the decision from your reckless passion of the past. And also don't make the decision from your completely rational, responsible adult, you know, egoic mind of the present. You want to be centered. You want to be sitting in your serendipity and feeling your heart space. This Ace of Cups is your heart space. So sit in your heart space before you make any decisions. Trust your intuition and trust the flow, right? You don't always have to take the harder road. Sometimes you do. But I think for you guys right now, everything is going to come together. And when you face the fork in the road, 
mm, there's you're going to be able to really sense deep in your bones which path is right for you because everything will come together you might there might be details that seem weird you might not understand how that's all going to work out you might go oh well i really wanted this i really wanted that well those are just the superficial details trust in your bones trust in your soul trust in your connection with your higher self trust in the serendipity of the universe to lead you down the right path you don't need to charge ahead anymore all recklessness and you don't need to work so hard anymore you're coming into this centered space this ace of cups your heart space navigate forward using your heart space trust in the serendipity and i think that's all i'm seeing for you guys thank you so much for tuning in i hope to see you again soon bye